Here's a complete run through of one of our proofs about linear independence, going through the thought process and steps we take in writing the proof, which include our three basic logical constructions, implies or if then statements, for all statements, and there exist statements. We'll also see use of definitions, using previously stated information in the proof, pattern matching, and basic algebraic manipulation. We'll highlight these techniques as we go through the proof. The statement we'll prove is that if the collection v1, v2, v3 in a vector space v is linearly independent, then so is the collection v1 minus 4, v2, v2, v3. Let's get started. The statement we're proving is an if then or implies statement. To prove such a statement directly, we'll suppose the hypothesis in our proof, and we'll need to deduce the conclusion, giving us a new target. We'll use the definition of linear independence to restate our hypothesis being careful to match the situation we're applying it to. The collection v1, v2, v3 being linearly independent means that the only linear relation on the collection is the trivial one. In symbols, alpha1 v1 plus alpha2 v2 plus alpha3 v3 equals zero. This is the form of a linear relation our collection implies that alpha1, alpha2, and alpha3 are all zero, meaning any such linear relation must be trivial. The entire implies statement is the definition. We should also use the definition of linear independence to restate what we need to show. Again, this doesn't go in our proof, as we don't know it's true yet. But it will guide our proof, so we'll definitely want to write it down, again being careful to apply the definition in context. The only linear relation on our other collection is the trivial one. In symbols, beta1 v1 minus 4 v2 plus beta2 v2 plus beta 3 v3 equals zero. This is the form of a linear relation on our other collection. We're using betas because the coefficients for this linear relation aren't the same as those in our other definition as they correspond to a different collection of vectors. Implies that beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3 are all zero. Any such linear relation must be trivial. Again, the entire implies statement is the definition of linear independence. Now that we've written out the definition of what we need to show, it tells us what to do next in our proof. Since another implies statement, we suppose its hypothesis that beta1 v1 minus 4 v2 plus beta2 v2 plus beta3 v3 equals 0. What we now need to show is that beta1, beta2, and beta3 are all 0. Our hypothesis tells us that a linear relation on v1, v2, v3 must be trivial. So, if we can write our linear relation in that form, we can use that hypothesis. Multiplying it out and collecting coefficients of v1, v2, v3, we do see a linear relation on those three vectors. By our hypothesis, all three of these coefficients must be zero. We now have a little linear system to solve for our betas. We'd immediately see that beta1 equals zero and beta3 equals zero. And since beta2 minus 4 beta1 equals zero, beta2 equals 4 beta1, which is also 0. We've shown that beta1, beta2, and beta3 are all 0, which finishes our proof.